Herkese yeniden merhabalar diyorum, iyi akşamlar diliyorum. Akademik günün iç ortam kalitesi başlıklı 5. oturumunda Nişantaşı Üniversitesi İç Mimarlık Bölüm Başkanı Sayın Profesör Doktor Hülya Kılıç ve FNP Mühendislik ve Müşavirlik Kurucu Ortağı ve Genel Müdürü Sayın Fidis Pehlivan bizlerle olacak. Öncelikle hoş geldiniz diyorum. Her hoş. katılımcımıza da. Hoş bulduk. Hoş bulduk. Ee, öncelikle sizlere ilk konuşmacımız olan Sayın Profesör Doktor Hülya Kılıç hocamızı tanıtmak istiyorum. Profesör Doktor Hülya Kılıç Mimar Sinan Güzel Sanatlar Üniversitesi mezundur. Doktor ve doçentlik kariyerini Yıldız Teknik Üniversitesi Mimarlık Fakültesi Yapı Fiziği Bilim Dalı'nda tamamlamıştır. Mesleki çalışmalarını daha sonra 20 yıl sektörde kendi aile şirketi olan Yapı Fiziği Uzmanlık
as you see, there are two photographs and it is from a laboratory and there are some squares within squares and you see also some points. It is about the issue If there is this appropriate lightning, then so let's skip this one. So there are four photographs, but the mask is same in all of them. So what we see that the quality and the angle of lightning and we see four different faces, four different characters, depending on the lightning. So what we can conclude? Architecture, which was about construction in the beginning, particularly in until mid 20th century. And from 20th century onwards, it gained a new identity. And the architecture has turned into a new technical area. And there are several scientific studies and discoveries are reflected on architecture and all these issues, noise, lightning, heating, humidity, balance, and also the sun lights control are, have become part of the architecture. And towards the end of the 20th century, the architecture has turned into an art of comfortable life for everyone. But those who pay attention to the exterior and the appearance only, they lose their sense, five senses. And also we have these type of issues. Today, people do not accept the conditions that were existent before, 20, before the 20th century. They want comfort in all aspects of their lives. So when we talk about the comfort, it is not only the luxury houses or the servants who are working at home or drivers who are waiting in front of the cars or bodyguards. No, we are talking about a lifestyle that goes smoothly and with no problem. A previous one. So these five senses are activated by all these elements and under an appropriate lightning. And if there is no glaring because of this issue, and if there is no noise, or if the temperature is appropriate, and if there is no smell which is not wanted, then we call it comfortable living standards in terms of physical atmosphere. People live in these buildings and we usually act and move. Sometimes we work, sometimes we live. For example, those who work in gyms, for example, we exercise or in an in a library, we are in an intellectual activity by reading. And so if there is no motion, if there is no action, then our body gets cold, then we lose our sense. Therefore, we do not want to be distracted. If it is then, if it's the concert hall, any noise needs to be prevented. It is important for the quality of the music, quality of the performance. And these are the issues that we need. Anyone who is not moving, then the speed should be an issue. 
and it can be positive or negative. All these factors may differ according to age, gender, being healthy or unhealthy, etc. And anyone who lives in an interior area, and we call it a physical atmosphere, and this physical environment, this physical atmosphere and environment is important for voice, for noise, for sound, light, temperature, and also thermal exchange, and also airflow, and also color in interior parts of the body, body interior parts of the house, and all these issues, and also the air quality are important for a healthy life. In this respect, interior aspect and also physical environment are connected to each other. And when we use the term atmosphere and environment, do not mean the same thing. We can use, for example, the term atmosphere, which is infinite, and it includes psychological and atmosphere, political atmosphere, or the temperature, or even a, a debate atmosphere. However, environment usually has a geometrical aspect, and its aspect is the is its aspect depends on human. From the past today, when we look at the structure, we see that structure is not a shelter only. It is a place where we get comfortable life, and where we have this technology and all the comfort resulting from the developments, resulting from the progress that we have made is important. And this is the issue that we need to regulate our living atmosphere. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your invaluable presentation. There is no question yet. So if you want, let me move. Let's move to Feliz Hanum. And if there's any question, I will let you know later. She is a board member of the Zero Bill Turkey as well. And let me introduce Filiz Pehlivan. She graduated from the Mechanical Engineering Department of the Middle East Technical University. Then she started her career as a project as a project engineering in Mechanic Test Sat a subsidiary of Me and MNG Holding in 1988. She specialized in NATO projects and shelter design at Unitech and Yalchin Technic companies. In 1996, she founded her own firm, FNP Engineering and Consulting Limited Company. She carried out many national and international projects. She has been continuing the mechanical installation project service of the Baku Akshayir wide city project for last six years especially she has been recognized as an authority in the sectoral sense contributed to legislative studies and presented papers on subjects such as heating ventilation air conditioning systems design efficient use of energy smart buildings green buildings fire consultancy to the two buildings she designed have received lee the gold certification she became the first woman to enter into the board members of the turkish society of HVAC, Sanitary Engineers, one of the leading associations in the sector. She served as the General Secretary for two years. She served as a board member of the Association of Turkish Consulting Engineers and Architects. She served as the editorial board of the chairman and editor of TM Technical Journal. Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday evening. And I would like to thank you all for being with us. I hope there will be no technical problem in my presentation. If there's a technical problem, our team will fix it. I think you can see my screen now, right? Yes, it works. I would like to thank our dear professor and it is an honor for me to be a panelist with her in the same session. So we work as architectural group 
electricity group, mechanical group, and if we coordinate well, then we can construct good buildings, efficient buildings. Let me begin with the following point. As we know that UN produces some reports and there are some red alerts, especially the UN General Secretary found such reports and he made the following statement, these hot airflow, forest fires, bushfires, and also some other extreme weather conditions threat to human life quality. And we also hear the term poor air quality very often because the result of these activities may cause climate change and also indoor quality is an issue that we need to achieve we as the zero build as you know very really well that we support the un sustainable development goals and most of these goals are our guides in fact i will underline these goals very briefly of course we are familiar with this concept these goals now but it is important for our activities for example, the SDG number three is good health and well-being. That means ensure healthy life, healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. As you know, the vaccination is a key example of this goal because we have to provide a healthy and a quality life to people. And in order to achieve it, we have responsibilities. I mean, mechanical engineers or the professionals who work for this sector have certain responsibilities. And of number four is quality education for everyone, especially for girls. And in this issue that we talk very often, it is important to have healthy school environments and healthy school buildings for all this. And another goal is goal number 11. It is about sustainable cities and communities. What we do, we build buildings, we construct closed environments. And given the fact that more than half of the world population lives in buildings and in urban areas. Safety cities are important. Safety and accessible buildings are important. So it is not only the buildings. Environmental quality is very important. Air quality is important. And it includes public transportation vehicles. These are our guys. That means in order to achieve these goals, if humanity has such goals, that means indoor quality is very important for us. As our dear professor stated, I agree with her when we use the term indoor quality, what do we mean by and which terms that are related to or connected to this indoor quality? I think these are related to my profession. It is the noise control and air quality is one of them. Of course, water quality is an issue for us. Vibrance is an issue for us, especially with well-developed equipments and devices. We take measures for the safety of the buildings and we have electromagnetic radiation. We have smell and odor, that means we need to prevent these type of smells and lightning, which our dear professor stated, which our dear professor covered in her presentation. And we have also lightning and also noise means in order to achieve indoor quality, there are several parameters that we need to consider that we need to work on. 
And of course, the term indoor quality, the World Bank back in 1992 stated that the pollution of indoor air quality is one of the four criteria among the most problematic environmental problems. And it defines the indoor quality that air that we breathe without any harmful particles or harmful agents. And according to our project that we have, this American Society of Heating and Refrigerating Air Conditioning, according to its standards back in 2001, it says, no concentration. That means there are some standards. This World Health Organization, etc. And and eighty percent or more than eighty percent of individuals should be happy with the quality of the indoor air. But how the air is polluted? There are many parameters. There are some reasons or parameters related to external environment or the temperature within the home, humidity or materials for that are used in this construction or the equipments that we use at home and also similar other factors may affect the air quality. Of course, there are various studies. Let me share this one that goes back to 1999. There are pollutants. Of course, I will not go into details of all of them, but these are the most common pollutants. For example, we have these pets or insects and we have asbest we say there is no there should be no asbest in houses and the house dust is another one we talk about insulation materials the furnitures of course outdoor air, air quality the location of the building, the particles are important. And if, for example, there is tobacco products, these are the important soil, the material for the construction. All these materials are important and that may pollute the air quality or they may transmit these emissions. Let me focus on some of them because we hear these terms very often in these days and we, need to be careful and sensitive to the, all these issues. For example, this ozone. We are talking about, it is a very strong full oxidants. And those who are subjected to acute, acute ozone harms our health, and then it may cause serious health problems and it may cause some problems because of this oxidative process. And we also hear the term carbon dioxide, CO2. And we ask people these CO2 preventers, why do we use, why do we refer to this CO2 very often? Because CO2 is not so common in outdoor air quality, but it is important to have CO2 at a certain amount. But what we know that CO2 is produced mainly by people, factories, or the chimneys, or volcanic eruptions, and also mining waters. And CO2, 8% of the CO2 is produced by fossil oils, by the use of fossil oils, of course. This is why we demand that the use of these fossil oils must be reduced. Go 
on the list, but I will not go all of them one by one. So if we have, unless we have enough ventilation, natural ventilation, we know the CO2 reaches a level that is harmful and destructive to our health. So we improve this issue and the existence of individuals at home and also some other activities produce higher level of CO2. And if it reaches a level that is higher than the standard, then it is problematic. This is why we need to keep it at a certain level, especially the COVID-19 period made it more visible. I also would like to term this, there are these volatile organic compounds. So there are some pollutants that enter into our house and there are some other activities that are produced as a result of human activity. There are some building materials, there, there, is, there are agents that we use for the cleaning purposes, there is painting and also furnitures, these glue or some other smokes, etc. All these agents, all these components, all these compounds, sorry, produce this CO2. And we need to combat against all these parameters. And we may also hear the term particle trap. And if it is more than, if it's, diameter is smaller than 2.5, then we call it, if it is bigger than 2.5, then we call it big or thick one. And if it is smaller, if diameter is smaller than 2.5, then we call it thin particles. And we use, we have aerosols, aerosols, and we have these particles. And these aerosols are stick to these particles, then they remain in the air and then they affect the quality. So, this indoor environment, and we know that 90% of our life is in the buildings, it is workplaces, our houses or cars. This is why the indoor air quality is an issue for us. And there are series of factors that affect the indoor air quality and it make it quality or not. But what we can summarize, there are main parameters, this lack of ventilation, humidity, and also traps emissions. And also mouth is another problem for us. So we know what to do to improve the quality, indoor quality. So for example, we need to control at its source. For example, we can have some exhaust system so that we can filter these destructive particles. And also ventilation system is one of the key tools that we have. And it's an issue that we call these air cleaners. We need to scale them up. And with the, these all tools, we can improve the air quality. That's what we state. Of course, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, there are disciplines that are connected to each other architectures, for example, design the buildings. That means we need to have this perspective from the very beginning. What should be the architectural approach to these buildings? That means we need to design the houses 
that will not use toxic materials. And our colleagues from the architecture discipline, they will use, they need to use, they need to design a house with the capacity of natural ventilation. So natural ventilation is not so simple that windows will be enough. So there is an interaction that improves the ventilation. In this respect, architecture pays attention or should pay attention to this ventilation, also access to outside, access to gardens or balconies are important or terrace is very important. Of course, energy efficiency in architecture is extremely important, like shading, like shading elements or prevention of thermal breaches. So we need to design our buildings with all this perspective. So I am a project officer or spe spe specialist of mechanical systems. So I am an engineer who works on, on this issue. And one of my tasks is when I design a building, I pay a maximum attention to a well-functioning ventilation system. Therefore, it is important to have a well-functioning effective ventilation system. That means we need to pay attention to the amount of clean air per person at home. For a comfortable life, it is, 62, it is 36 cubic meter per hour. That is minimum, of course. In our project design phase, we need to know the capacity. We need to know how many people will use it. So if there is more people, there are more people than the capacity, it will not, the air will not be enough. So we can use some quality filters and we need to use the appropriate filters. Then, we need to use higher quality filters. That's what we use in our systems. I talked about ozone and I talked about how it pollutes the environment. And this is what we do not want. And we have ventilation and also cooling. So it is not only the ventilation. So if we have this ventilation, it is not enough. We also need to talk about the thermal comfort and humidity is important, especially especially the Relative humidity is important. And I talked about the CO2 level is important for health, especially for indoor area, especially for in the period of this virus. And since there is no meter to detect, but the level of CO2 may function as a meter and it is 600 ppm and the maximum is 1000 ppm and if it is 1000 then no one must no one must stay there we can't stay there and the air turbulation is important we need to have designs that prevents air turbulence so what will we do in the next period we should have performance analysis based designs with computerized systems so that we can build healthy uh, buildings. We have to ensure uh, that your air belongs to you in these designs, especially during the pandemic. We had worries in uh, vehicles, in uh, aircrafts. So uh, the 
in mixture of or integration of virus uh, contributed to its spread. We're going to use filter efficiency and we will follow up on the devices uh, with their uh, filter characteristics. So we have many roles to play. HEPA filter actually is considered as part of the vehicles and there are ongoing studies for that. However, UV ionization, bipolar ionization, ozone generator uh, are the technologies that are actually uh, asked about. And these disinfection technologies are not recommended by our site as uh, they make further research. However, the building standards will also be reviewed accordingly. So this customized uh, air spaces are part of the studies and we're going to see uh, more of them moving forward. And uh, actually here there's going to be this absorption uh, with the air circulating around the person. And actually this is thought for students where actually the air is uh, pushed down through an aperture and sent upward again. Otherwise, what do we encounter? First and foremost, health risks. After building more insulated buildings with closed windows and uh, leaving all the initiative to ventilation without enough ventilation, we encounter a syndrome called sick building syndrome and building related uh, diseases were identified and it was understood that you would get rid of those diseases when you start going to such buildings here headaches uh, irritations rashes on eye nose throat dry cough infection or uh, some other uh, inhalation issues, respiratory issues were observed as part of this disease. I hope this is not a bore, this is not going in a boring way for you. Now, I would like to combine all my remarks with the uh, pandemic. I told you about the particles that hang in the air and their sizes. 10 micron, uh, for example, this is symbolized here. And then we have five micron and one micron. And COVID-19 uh, virus actually has a size of 0 0.1 micron. So this is the sort of space it covers. So we are talking about ultra thin particles that carry this virus by uh, also letting them hang in the air. That has been the talk for the past one and a half years because those uh, particles smaller than one, uh, 10 migrant, uh, we call them airborne, they can stay in the air for hours. We also call them aerosols. You may be hearing about aerosols frequently, and they have different sizes, as I referred to earlier. In the first place, uh, we would question whether aerosols caused the infection of the virus. Then, if that's the case, then uh, you can send, uh, emit those aerosols to a short distance. I mean, an aerosol with a size of 100 micron can actually spread outside in five seconds. But aerosols with smaller microns can uh, hang in the air longer. For example, if the value is five microns, it can stay for 32 minutes. For one micron, that value is 12 hours. And with the delta um, variant, we saw that uh, actually the virus can stay in the air longer 
and the various health organizations acknowledge that. Of course, we should not be afraid of it. We should know this, we should take precautions so that we can fight with this issue. That's why we have been explaining this topic for the past one and a half years. There's this uh, finding too, if they have very small sizes, they, they can actually reach your lungs. Otherwise, they stay in your upper respiratory tract with higher sizes, but when they get smaller, they go all the way to your lungs. That's why as ventilation engineers, we have been trying to tell that if this virus is uh, communicated with aerosols, then there's this impact by the air flows. And this case study shows that the virus is uh, actually uh, effective in distances as short as one meter and eight meters through aerosols. This has been proven now. I will now combine the topics of virus and internal air quality, which was impacted by heat, uh, humidity, or temperature, humidity, salinity, surface materials, and ultraviolet radiation. Actually, the same things are influential on the active nature and contraction of the virus. So, uh, when we uh, ensure internal air quality in the interiors, that will contribute to both our health conditions as well as uh, proving important in the fight against the viruses. So, if we create a favorable internal air quality uh, conditions, then that will be an investment for our future, uh, long-term future, as well as the short-term future. Now we are uh, joining an academic session, and I know that this is attended by students and teachers alike. That's why I wanted to tie this topic to healthy classrooms and schools. Internal air quality is important in schools, thermal control, air contaminating sources, and mobility of students actually are, uh, have an impact on the air quality of the classrooms. Let me move on to this important uh, source by Lancet. So this was not stated only by the mechanical people like us. Many health institutions and doctors also give uh, voice to this opinion. Here, uh, we can say that these uh, buildings play a critical role in the spread of diseases. And uh, when we address air quality, we will be able to have safe opening of classrooms and will uh, also uh, enable long-term education. And in order to prevent diseases that are uh, communicated through airborne means, we must ensure that we have healthy ventilation systems. That's why for the last one and a half years, we uh, recommended uh, measuring carbon dioxide values through these sensors and monitor the air quality and uh, uh, make sure that teachers open and close windows by looking at the air quality inside the classroom. But in the ideal scenario, ensure that we have clean air inside the classroom. Let's use the filters with the best classes and uh, with best efficient efficiencies. Otherwise, let's support our systems with HIPAA filters if we run across issues there because all the studies show that if you have internal air quality inside the classrooms, the success rates also uh, increase accordingly. That's why I wanted to show this slide. For example, every uh, 100 ppm increase in carbon dioxide levels, concentrations, uh, cause the students to have actually 0.4 less attendance or attention in the classroom. There are so many 
studies, for example, uh, under normal circumstances, when you go to a classroom, the carbon dioxide level increases 300 and even 5,000 ppm. And we say that it should not go higher than 1,000 ppm. That's why we have to have these filters inside the schools. Maybe we don't have the next slide as part of the Turkish standards, but in international standards, they already explain and state the necessity of ensuring minimum standards in terms of internal air quality. If we can enable, persuade our investors, then we can ensure that it uh, is uh, uh, exists. It exists in our projects. Also, air uh, distribution is important. We I receive many questions about ensuring. Uh, that uh, inside the classrooms. And I uh, see uh, people and authorities listening, listening to my recommendations and taking their own precautions as the schools were opened as we knew it due to a uh, lack of interest from the public domains. So there are teachers and parents who actually integrate fans and ensure that fresh air is provided and the, uh, the the dirty one is sent outside. Also, there are school-based, more institutional uh, activities for heat recovery uh, practices uh, with devices. Actually, installing uh, uh, there are countries who install which installed it uh, just after the outset of the pandemic. That's an example from Romania. It may not be very aesthetic, but they understood the importance of ventilation and they inserted it in classrooms. I tell about the importance of uh, ventilation or airing in on social media. Ismail Kshuka uh, shared this tweet uh, in his program. Uh, and here as mechanical engineers and other engineers, we should be, uh, I think, talking more and increase awareness of this matter. The pandemic will disappear maybe one day, but due to the climate uh, change, we're going to see increased uh, dryness and maybe even encounter new pandemics. Air quality matters for that reason, and we should collaborate to ensure that we have that uh, air quality inside our schools. Let me finish by saying that these are all the tasks research initiatives we are responsible for. But we should look at the bigger picture at the end as all the uh, administrators in this country. Uh, and we have a United Nations Climate Summit in November. Uh, and they are going to look at the uh, benefits of Paris Agreement. Uh, it in that summit and Turkey, I uh, hope will ensure that this agreement is enacted in the parliament. So all the countries have actually their responsibilities like preserving biological uh, diversity, uh, decreasing climate change, managing wastewater, as well as the use of chemicals. We talked about water, we talked about uh, air, we, as you know, we contaminated even our seas by leaving the chemicals, really the chemicals to water. We have been discussing, discussing for days now, uh, energy efficiency, and this is an important we have to uh, value, but with this signing and a ratification of Paris Agreement, we'll have to take certain energy efficiency measures and use energy efficiency systems to be close to these uh, uh, emission values. Let me finish with this. We, I, I want to talk about our future as the last topic. In climate and biological diversity, we discuss certain matters, but actually inhaling clean air is as much important uh, for our children's future and we should to 
to work together to ensure that. I believe that each group of young people are working in that direction. I'd like to end with this book by Florence Nightingale in order to ensure the health of buildings under uh, security. We need clean air, pure water, efficient drainage, cleaning, and sunlight, cleanliness and sunlight. That's what she said back in 1859. So for us to uh, ensure healthy and uh, flexible buildings, we have a duty and we should be working for that. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Phyllis. This has been a, a valuable presentation with full of insights. I will move on to questions as we have 14 minutes and we'll make use of that time with questions. There's this question for uh, Ms. Hulia. What kind of a mathematical methods do you, uh, uh, do you apply for internal elimination? Before talking about the uh, internal elimination, I here refer to the components about the uh, internal space. And I didn't elaborate on details and here elimination is an important topic, but there's this simple formula, uh, like uh, looking at the uh, sur like the light is touching the surface uh, and being divided by another component. That would be a detailed uh, answer. But in addition to actually a uh, bright surface, we should also look at the the quality of that light, seeing different shades, for example, of color with the light, seeing four varieties. These are all important in interior uh, light, lighting in interior uh, spaces. So here, quality of light, whether you arrange the sun uh, uh, light or uh, light angle very well, and here you should also know about the structure of the eye itself. I do not want to elaborate more because it's a wide topic. Thank you very much, Professor Ilya. Mr. Levent asks uh, Ms. Phyllis this question, a committee member, based on your explanations, HVAC systems, To what extent do you benefit from them or do you benefit from them in terms of your measurements, re measurements regarding the climate and the uh, heating? Calling? Well, of course, we pay attention to this aspect in heating and cooling and practices. We have tables for cities and they are updated occasionally. The climate changes and you have to update uh, these data. That's why we pay attention to them. Just in the preliminary report, we share this data as climate data and we get approval from the employer because our system, our, the success of our system depends on that. And the changing data may cause your devices to be insufficient. One more question. I think from our team, self-cleaning thallium dioxide nanotechnological materials. Do you, uh, can, can be, do you think they can be used to improve the interior air quality? What kind of materials are used in uh, the pandemic, in the times of the pandemic? Well, a very tough question. Nanotechnology is used, of course, in many areas, and it is going to, uh, it is going to provide comfort to us. I know this from data I, uh, I learned in different classrooms. However, we entered the pandemic era very quickly and uh, we can actually defend, we could actually defend technologies with proven results. And the most important example concerned the use of HIPAA filters as, they, uh, as we had NASA based uh, evidences that show that HIPAA filters can retain uh, that the, the virus. However, fresh, 100% fresh air systems should be uh, used now, we said, as the current 
uh, systems did not have uh, that filter capacity. If you use actually permanent air uh, inside uh, or static air inside without any HIPAA filter feature, then you will circulate, you were circulating the air uh, with virus. That's why we supported that. Thank you very much, Ms. Phyllis. Uh, that was uh, that would be all. Uh, that is the all the questions. But we have very nice comments on YouTube. I would like to thank you very much for your valuable support as well as information presented to us. Uh, we would like to thank all the participants of these five sessions. And my moderator role ends with this session for today. However. We uh, are going to have another session uh, on the construction uh, of zero energy buildings. Uh, and uh, I wish enjoyable, actually, sessions for you. The next session is the relationship between meteorology and climate from construction to operation of zero energy buildings. We look forward to seeing you in another session. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. I'd like to thank you for your efforts as well.